name is Vera McKenzie. I am the 2021-2022 Confluent, Catalyst Confluence Fellow. And part of my mandate as the uh, fellow this year is to reach out to BIPOC artists, talk about art, talk about race, talk about anything that we want to have a discussion on. And it is my pleasure to be talking to a friend of mine that I've known since 1989, 90. Uh, Anthony Santiago, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Baron. Thank you. It's you lovely mind, to be here. It, I'm so happy to talk to you. Um, do you mind uh, sort of telling everybody a little bit about where they might have seen you and you know your background? Sure. Um, uh, so I, I'm an actor um, and uh, currently based in Vancouver, um, but I grew up in Sherry Park. I was born and raised in Alberta. Um, things that people may have seen me in, um, last summer, uh, summer of 2021, I was in uh, a play called Heaven, which is written by Cheryl Fogo, and it was myself and um, wonderful actor Helen Belay. Uh, uh, so we did that last year, um, I... Uh, done some TV. Um, there's a series called Motherland Fort Salem. Mm. And I um, uh, had a reoccurring role as a one of three fathers to uh, um, 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 uh, a, a witch. Oh. And, um, it's it's a, an alternative history of, of America. Um, where the Salem witch trials um, didn't happen. And uh, one of the prominent families, which is a black family, um, and it's all matriarch, uh, matriarch, matriarchy. It was, it's all a matriarchy. Um, they, uh, 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 they, the wealthy women have multiple husbands. And so I was one of three husbands. Well, what, is that? what was that show called? Uh, Motherland Fort Salem. So it's currently on uh, Disney Plus, I believe. Oh, fabulous. Well, I'm really excited to to uh, interview you because uh, for those that don't know, Anthony and I have known each other since our uh, Grant McEwen college days. We were both, he was in the second year when I came to the school and uh, I got the pleasure of watching for me, it was so, I didn't realize the power of seeing, there were only two, two there was a uh, uh, Sylvia Wong, um, mm -hmm. lovely Asian, uh, Asian actress uh, that w was in my class, yep. and you and I. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so to see somebody like you, and you were in, you played the waiter in She Loves Me, mm -hmm. and that was my first time that I was like in a sort of a semi-serious, you know, learning how to act and be background and to watch you shine in that part every single night. It was really hard to act because I just want, I just was like this. <laughs> and then Nancy <laughs> McAleer would say, get, get start acting. I, I am acting, but he's so good. Oh, that's very lovely. That's a very lovely thing for you to say. So wow. I wanted to ask you um, about sort of coming into the into this profession. I mean, you, you, I, I think you are one of the people that I know that I've known all my life that has an artist heart. And when I say an artist heart, no matter where you've gone in life, the draw to art always calls you back. Mm. So, do you want to like sort of let us know when that began for you, um, when you st wanted to start be being an actor? Sure. Um, it it, it uh, I'm going to date myself here, but uh, back in the '70s, there was a a TV variety show called Gong Show, and um, growing up, I was a class clown, and um, I loved the Gong Show. And, wanted to be on the gong show i didn't know what i wanted to do but i just knew i wanted to be on it um and uh when it eventually was canceled uh i kind of had to come up with a, a plan b and at the time i was like eight or nine years old or so 
uh, I had a lovely uh, teacher, Mr. Dick, uh, Mr. Ron Dick, who knew that I was interested in acting and decided to start a drama club. And that was uh, sort of the beginnings of, of um, me all going, starting on the path of being an actor as opposed to a career as a class clown. <laughs> gone very far. It, it's a it, it's a step up for sure. <laughs> I think Not it's a bit a, of a step it, up. Kind of a half step, but you know, it's a still a step. So That's you cool. and you went to um so you went to the Citadel Theater School. Yes. Um, and you that's where you did how old were you when you went there and when you did your first professional production sure so uh i was about nine or ten when i went to the theater school and then i was about 12 or 13 when i was cast in um the mclab theater's inaugural production of um peter pan it was actually the first show to open that space and uh, it was, you know, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, I played one of the um, uh, the Indian boys, one of the native boys. Because. Um, because. Why not? Why not? Um, <laughs> I think it may have something to do in that they were trying to conserve as much of the, bo of the body paints as they could that the other boys had to wear. So it made sense that I was cast. I didn't have to. You know, worry about that. So, um, yeah, that was that was uh, <laughs> that was a thing. I mean, in the rationalization, I have to jump in here because I have yes. my own story. Do you remember when we were in school? Were you ever in what is it, uh, Candida or no, Candida? Candide. Candide. Yeah. I think, and they had a whole bunch of slaves, and they came. They asked. They asked. Um, all the kids from McEwen who were interested to go and be in this opera. Yeah, it's Aida. 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 And were I, you in that? I went and I went to the rehearsals and they were the most weirdest freaking rehearsals. And then I was told that everybody in the cast was going to be dipped in paint because they were all white people. Yeah. And then they came to me and said, oh, well, you don't need to be dipped in paint. Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm not black, black. I'm like cocoa. I'm like right. ch milk chocolate. I'm on the lighter and it was winter. So I was like, you know, white. You, right. So give and me the, give me the black face, please. Please black face me. And I, I, when they, they told me that I didn't know what I was talking about, that it's going to look the same. And I was like, I am, I, I'm not doing this. And I didn't do it. So. Okay. okay. It, May I? Yes. I did do it. <gasps> so here's the here's my here's my thing. I they were they were paying. <laughs> they were paying me money. Wow. So when it came time, because they had like tubs of of black paint, body paint that they put on these people. So when it came time to the slaves being herded out, I ran behind the tallest, biggest white guy I that, that was in there and I hunkered down behind him so no one could see me. I was still getting paid. I was not, I was not going to make it and no one recognized my face or even knew I was there. <laughs> I should have been partnered with you. You should have. I, I didn't know that you were there. I was. I think I went to the first, the first thing, and and it was like, oh, I'm going to be in this play and this opera. It's like I'm, I'm really making it. And then I realized, like, oh no, you're a slave. Oh no, you're going to be painted. Oh no, I'm too gay for this shit. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out. Thank you, deuces. See you well, later. see, you you were a better person than I was. I took the money and I ran. You were just thirsty. I was thirsty. <laughs> I was thirsty. Papa I was needed thirsty, that. but I wanted to be at the at the gay bar, not at like <laughs> not on stage in orange, like not being in orange paint. That was my like. I'm gonna stick out like a sore thumb, and it was. I was getting the same conversation when it like back in the day I don't know if you got this probably not from your family but from others when we'd be all out in the summer and everybody's putting on suntan lotion and they wouldn't give it to me because they said oh well you're black it doesn't hurt your skin mm. you, 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 yeah you we that? never yeah we never because 
all of us were are this color. So the sun tan lotion was never in the house. It was, it was just stuff that you know my white neighbors and you know would put on or whatever. But um, yeah, we never and we never were told why. It was just never in the house. But I'm a light skin guy and yeah. I'm like blistering yes, and beet you're... red and they're still telling me no, no, no. no you're, that's all in your head. Oh. You're a black person and black oh. people don't, their skin doesn't burn. I'm like, no, oh, jeepers. I'm oh, sorry I to wanted, hear that. I, I wanted to talk to you about, and then you went to, um, to St. Albert and you met the family that is the Ryan family. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so in the cast of uh, Peter Pan, I met some lovely kids and they told me about a summer program um, out in St. Albert that was run by a Marilyn Ryan. So I, I don't remember what I did, whether it's phone call or sent a letter, there was no email at the time. And um, uh, I, was, I was able to take part in the program. It was uh, <laughs> production that I was cast in was Huck Finn, and um, it was it was it was a great. What was fantastic about that program was that it uh, I learned uh, I took dance classes, and we had voice classes, and we had movement classes, and acting classes, and then all of these things brought together, and we did this musical version of Huck Finn. And there was, uh, there was a you know an orchestra and there was a, a piano player and this was totally new to me, um, and Marilyn was just lovely. She she was very lovely with all the kids and um, it was just a fantastic program. Uh, and then a couple of years later, when um, I was graduating from high school, I, I wanted to take some time off because I didn't know whether I wanted to be. Go into acting or whether I want to go into visual arts. Yeah. So I was um, really into drawing and, and painting at that time. And uh, my mother, um, who is a, a person who's very diplomatic and easy to negotiate with, said, uh, You have two choices either you go to school or you move out. Uh, uh, I was, she knew that I was too young, naive, and soft to move out. So, I only had one option, which was yeah. an option. So I got myself together. I um, got my audition together, and I was going to audition for the, the theater program, which was run by uh, Tim Ryan, who at the time was uh, Marilyn's husband. Um, needless to say, I got in, and um, uh, Tim was uh, the most extraordinary person I had met. Um, he was my mentor. He was um, a father figure. Uh, he was a beloved friend. Um, outside of the rehearsal hall, um, outside of school time, um, I could go to his house and we could sit and talk. And um, uh, I miss him dearly. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, and, and from from that point, um, uh, Tim, the, the program at the time um, that Tim was running, he had uh, Leave It to Jane Theater, yeah, which um, was a, a way for some of the graduates to transition out of the school and into a profession. Such a good idea. It's like yeah. such oh. a good idea. Uh, wonderful, wonderful idea. Um, I, I, I wish more schools would would do that have something like that to be able to get the kids to go oh I, well this stuff we're learning that? yeah can I ask you like what like why is that for you why was it important to have this this fledgling this theater company that was sort of around the graduates why was that important for you as an actor it was uh, a, an excellent um training ground in the real world yeah in the real setting yeah. where we're now you know it's not about the pay we were getting paid but it wasn't that it was the things that we had learned in school things some of them those things were applicable most of them weren't yeah but you learned it being 
in a professional setting and you're working with um, professionals from, you know, from various age groups to, as opposed to just being with students, now you're working with um, seasoned veterans and, yeah. uh, and it was, it was extraordinary. It was an extraordinary um, way for me to build my confidence, if anything, oh my goodness, um, and, and to develop skills. Well, and and and, and I, like I I have to like you and I share a, you and I share so much. And one of the things I shared with you when uh, you were talking about Tim is that how like I he was my mentor. He was the person that saw past. I was I was very ill with HIV at that point. I was uh, chronically addicted. I was um, self sabotaging. I'm just coming out of the AIDS pandemic and into school where it's a completely different life. And he saw past all that when so many other instructors held everything that I was against me and wouldn't cast me and told me that I didn't belong there because I was wasting their time because I didn't fit the white, straight, masculine leading role, man. I, like we share that. And can you talk to me how important it was for you to have somebody that has power to see what you bring to the table and to uh, validate that? Yeah. You know, what's interesting, Baron, is that I didn't know it at the time. Yeah. It's only in hindsight. Yeah. It's only in speaking to young black actors, young black acting students, that I realized how extremely fortunate I was that I had Tim to guide me. Yeah. Because there was never a point where my race was an issue. It, 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 was, it wasn't even, it was inconceivable for Tim. He saw me as someone who was silly and could, you know, who liked to be funny and like, well, I'm going to cast you in this. I'm going to cast you in that. Um, and it's only, again, it's only in hindsight that I, yeah. I, I realized how super fortunate and, and amazingly um, blessed uh, I, I was um, to, to have that acceptance. Well, could um, you imagine though if he was somebody different? If he was somebody different that held mm -hmm. who you were and what you brought to the table against you, you may yep. not have been an actor. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And this is this kind of goes back to my point, and tangentially, in my mom knowing who I was that I wasn't ready to move out. Uh, I I needed to have the space to i needed to have the support to feel like i could do this and i think if i hadn't mm. i am absolutely certain i would not have continued as an actor yeah so the so you're saying like the two things right the the supporter in the in the field and then having a family that that didn't try to talk you out of it in a sense of you can't do this you had kind of both things that were supporting you in because school allowed you to figure out who who you were right it was, it, was, it, was it was the beginning of trying to figure out who i, I yeah. didn't know who i was until about oh, five Last years week. ago six years ago <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. But then I figured it out, and then it no, that's no, not it either. That's not. So. I, I think it's it, no, no, no. It's not that either. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a question though. So sure. sorry to interrupt, but no, no. Um, you've been in film and television. You've now you went away from acting, then you came back to acting at an old at at a more mature age. Yeah. Um, uh, is, tell me about like. How, just your own self-perception of being an actor now compared to who you were then. I, I think now I have, I've got a lot more experience, insight yeah. into life. Yeah. Um, and there's um, a need now for me to represent. Yeah. And what I mean by that 
is to represent us. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what, one of the things that I think is a, was a double-edged sword, uh, which is something that was, I think it started in around the 80s, maybe the 70s, the 80s, 90s, was the concept of colorblind casting. Yeah. Um, I think the intention was fantastic. It's a way to get people who, uh, like myself, yourself, into these roles, into these art, you know, these, these roles as, as, as um, practicing um, artists. Mm -hmm. Coming back to it, I see it not as a positive thing anymore. Yeah. I think what we need to do and what's slowly, slowly, slowly been happening, like every, like a lot of things, that we need to have our stories represented on stage. Yeah. This. Yeah. I've played a numerable a number of European characters, white yeah. characters. Yeah. Um, with the understanding that, oh, people will see, they'll see it. They'll see that you're a white character. Will they? No, no. I walk on the stage and I'm a different tone to, you know, my mother and my father and my grandmother. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm not adopted. There's, there's yeah. no, it's just, that's, that's the way that th the people accept things. Yeah. That, no, I, I, I have, I uh, don't agree with it. And, and I have a strong, Staying for it. Um, one of the most beautiful things that has been happening for me in the past four years is I there have been plays that I've been casting where I am playing someone who is of African descent. Even more so last year when um, I did Heaven at the yeah. Theater. It was the first time in my career as an actor that the director was black, the playwright was black, my fellow actor was black. Baron, I can't tell you what that, what that dispelled, what that released from me, that I wasn't even aware of. I was among people who understood what these who these people are where they come from yeah um the thing that you and i are are great at which i think which is one of my issues with with colorblind casting is that we are culturally bilingual yeah we're we're adaptable super adaptable Last i can go i can you can go i could go into a, yeah. a, a room full of white people and be yeah. fine have discussions about yeah Moliere, I think. But then I can go home with my parents and eat roti and talk about, you know, their experience uh, growing up in Trinidad. We have that ability to, I guess the word is code switching. Yeah. It's delightful not to have to do that with the with the with the creative endeavor that you're working in. Yeah. Um, where the director knows actor knows um there's just something freeing and 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 it's there's a, a a beautiful attachment to the piece or to these type of to these pieces that i haven't felt for a long time and i felt that personal. i felt sorry to interrupt again but i i felt like i started weeping when i saw that show i started mm -hmm. weeping because i saw my friend standing in his power as a black man in one of the largest theaters in Canada, in a show written by, acted by, directed by people of color and black people. Yeah. And um, it, it, it brought me to tears. Like I started crying. I was sitting next to Kate Ryan, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I, I started crying and she asked if I was okay. And I, I said, you know, it's just, 
who would have thought that in 1989, 90, when you and I met, that this is where we would be? And we're still not far enough ahead, right? Yeah. Like we're still, we're still, but boy, what a powerful statement that was. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I got to see one of my dearest people that you and I don't hang out a lot, but we're like, we, we are, we're like, we just, I don't need to. When we do. We do. Like when we do safe. though, nobody my God. Nobody is safe. Like you don't want to be around us because it's all inside jokes and a lot of head bobbing. <laughs> right? Like, Absolutely. but I just I just was so proud of you. And um I wanted to so tell me and tell us uh -huh. what's happening for you next. Well, Baron, uh I will be uh um heading to Stratford, the Stratford Shakespeare Festival um, this summer yeah. to uh, do uh, two shows. Um, I'll be in Hamlet uh, playing uh, the Player King, and I will be uh, uh, doing taking the lead on um, a Nigerian play called Death and the King's Horseman by a Nigerian poet laureate an amazing writer, Wole Shuenka, um, a tour de force in, in, in uh, the literary world. And um, yeah, that's, that, that's, it's going to be, I, from my, my understanding is it's one of the first times in Stratford, Stratford's history that they have uh, a cast that is mainly all, that is mainly black. Wow. Um, there's black. Wow. And this festival has been on, has been going on since the, I want to say since the 50s. 50s? Yeah, I think, right? And this is the first time that they're having. And look at this, though. Like, look at this. Like, you have your, you know, and this is, again, I know it sounds really corny, but, like, this is the hardest heart, right? Like, you go from central Alberta, not knowing, but knowing that you wanted to remain, be an actor. It pulled you to all the places that you needed to be in order to make that happen. You found strength and uh, support and kinship with people like Tim Ryan and Dennis Simpson and, mm -hmm. and of course me. Of course you, I mean, number so, one. Yeah, yeah. But then you are on the forefront now of this new world where George Floyd taught us, taught, not didn't teach us because we didn't need to be taught on this subject, but yeah. showed the world the inequity and the, 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 the wrongness of the way we are treated on all levels. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you're in plays now that are, centered around all of the people involved being of color, mm -hmm. black people, brown people. I just, I just, that makes me so happy. Mm. I'm so happy that you came back to acting after taking a sabbatical and getting to know you're having a family and, mm. and, and, and you had, you got to do that. And now you're coming back to it as a mature, um, mature leader. Mm. in how this can be done, how this is done. And so I thank you for that. Well, thank you. I but that, that very lovely, very lovely thing to say. And it's the I, only I, time I'm ever gonna say something like that. So oh, I know. And thankfully it's it's recorded because I'm gonna be playing this every time I'm feeling a little low. This is what Baron, because you'll never say it again. This is what Kermit the Frog said. Because you know I sound like Kermit the Frog, a oh, little bit, like wow. his sister, maybe. Okay. This and cousin. One more question. So can you tell me, um, this has been a delight, by the way, thank you. Oh, for me too, for me too. Um, one of the questions, the last question I want to ask you is, what would you like to say to um, brown, black, uh, different, out of the normal people of kids of color, students of color who are in acting schools, what is, what is some of the, what is, what would you like to tell them? Hmm. They watch this. That's a, that's a great question. It's a big question. Yeah. Um, 
I would say find your support and strength where you can. If it's among yourselves, collectively, if there is anyone who, and be proud of, be proud of who you are and don't be dissuaded by the nose or you're not this enough or you're not that enough or we need you to be you have to tell those people thoughts to mm. off because you have work to do and you're important to continue to lay down what dennis simpson what uh, uh james baldwin what wule shoyinka uh, has laid before us. It's it's a it's a continuation, and we and call upon us those who who've been uh, through the you know the grist of the mill. Call upon us. We'd be more than glad to uh, help offer support where we can. Um, but know that they aren't alone. That you're not alone. We have a community, and we may be small, but we are still a community, and we still need to be present and we need to be um uh represented and out there yeah and i and, and that's i think it's a lovely way to leave it and i i i agree i mean this is my whole calling since i i'm 53 years old now i i used to be like what's next who's helping me what am i getting but once i've it hit this age i've come to a place of I need to start giving back because people like Brad Fraser and 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 uh, uh, you know Trevor Roberts and these people that saw something in uh, uh, Tim um, Tim Ryan they saw something in me Marty Meriden saw a spark in me and gave me a chance yeah and so that's what I feel my calling is now as an artist to keep making art because I will always make art but always to reach a hand out to those who need support and guidance. And I think yeah. that's what you do. And that's what I do. And that's what makes us, frankly, just amazing people. <laughs> oh my God. I love doing this. Thank you so much. I Thank you. Thank you, Baron. Hours. I, I, I love speaking to you and I, I love being in your presence. And every time, every time I am on the verge of tears or laughter, joy every time every time right and if i don't do it the next time you can write me a, a strongly worded letter saying oh you, you did not take me to the places that you usually do <laughs> you're gonna get it we don't worry about a that conversation about this and you have to do the head swirl oh I'll uh, right see there it goes you do it way better than me Listen, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me anthony and thanks for letting us get to know who you are and good luck and break a leg in stratford like i am going to try to make it thank you yes! Baron. thank you thank you so much <laughs>